Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Apache and we're looking at the engine and system MPD pages. So from either cockpit it first into the engine page, we can get there various ways, but today we'll go menu, engine. The engine page can be displayed in three formats. In flight mode, which is our default as shown here. Then we could have ground mode. To do that, we can remove the throttles lower than fly and start one of the starter motors temporarily. We're now in ground mode. Let's put that bit back to in flight mode. In fact, let's just make sure we're paused very quickly. We are. And to get in emergency mode, let me slam the collective forward and you'll briefly see emergency mode there. Right, let's put that back before we break something. Let's start with in-flight mode. Around the top, we will see various options to get to different pages. The only other page we're interested in today is the sys sub page here, which we'll come back to. So the basic engine page layout. Here, torque. That is a rotational force. Here, we have temperature. Here we have rotational speed or taco and the same there. Let's start on torque. Torque is a rotational force posed by the engine output shafts on the aircraft drivetrain. We have engine one here and engine two here. It's not measured in pounds feet or newton meters. Instead, it's measured in percent and it can go above 100%. The actual percent is displayed here and here. If I move my collective up and down, uh, let me put this little icon at the top left and show you the collective, this guy here. In fact, what the collective does, I should explain it as we increase it up and down, is to change the pitch of the rotor blades. The higher the pitch, the more lift, but the more friction. Now, when I move it up and down, the main computer system in the Apache will adjust the engine settings accordingly. Note there's always a bit of lag. So if I increase collective, it's a few seconds before the engines will catch up. So torque, here's the percentage torque of the engine on the drivetrain shown also as a color coded bar here to help display what's going on. Here we have the maximum limit. The maximum limit is dynamic. It will change depending on parameters like rotor speed, like the mismatch between engines and possibly other parameters. We'll come back to that. If I were to increase the torque, so let's just focus on the torque at the moment. If I go above 100, pause. You can see if I get to a certain limit, A, it changes color and B, we get a number down here. First, the color. Green means all is good. If you stay in the green, then you're not going to cause any problems. Yellow is intermediate, otherwise known as transient. If you're yellow, then it's going to give you a certain amount of time that you can stay in that yellow before you're going to start doing some damage. And you can see at this rating here, we've been given six seconds to get back down to green before we cause some problems. It's not just up, but also you can go too low. If some of these parameters get too low, you'll have the same type of thing. Okay, so let's really push now. Let's push all the way through intermediate, which will have multiple stages, by the way, and up into red. Red. If we go into red, it means we've done serious damage to the aircraft. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the engines are going to blow up or your rotor's going to fall off, but in real life, it would mean that metal fatigue damage has occurred and your ground crew would have to probably rip the helicopter apart and try and fix it. How relevant is this to DCS? It has some relevance. Obviously, we don't care if at the end of the mission the aircraft is mildly fatigued because we'll just get a new one at the beginning of the new mission. But if you push things too hard, you can indeed catch your engines on fire or damage your rotors and the aircraft will stop flying. So it is something you should take seriously. And I pop that back down there before I blow something up. Now, you remember I said that the maximum limit was dynamic. Let's give you an example of that. If I unhook here and I remove one of the engines from fly to a lesser throttle level, I'm going to put it into single engine mode. And let me just try and stabilize everything now. Pip. Uh, so what's happened in single engine mode is it's changed my limit. Uh, you can see the red limit is now much higher and I also have extra transient or intermediate limits. You can see that extra uh, yellow line is there. Let me just try and experiment and show you what I mean. So instead of 100, we can go all the way up here now and instead of 6 seconds we've now got uh, 2 minutes and 20 and 6 seconds would be there and red is now up there, 130. So that's the difference between the two uh, single engine and twin engine mode. Put it back to dual engine it takes a few seconds to stabilize the computer's got to do its maths and get the turbines all wearing up again okay we're now back in dual engine mode everything we've learned about how these torque bars work also apply to these other guys here so 
Next is temperature. This is the temperature in Celsius of the hot part of the engine, the turbine part of the engine. Absolute figure shown here, bar shown here, color code same as before, maximum limit here, and two different intermediate limits here. You'll have intermediate limit one there, two there, and three there. Uh, let's try and show that off, shall we? So increase collective. So the way it works, obviously I'm increasing collective, then I'm increasing the torque levels, and if I do that, the motors have got to work harder, therefore the temperature in the turbine is going to go up and so on. So you can see I've passed 800 or whatever it was, and I've now got 30 minutes I'm allowed in terms of temperature to continue with this temperature. Uh, let's move up a bit more, let's see if we can get any higher. Ah. Yes, I can't get any higher. Pause. I can't get any higher because uh, I'm not really working the engines. I'm just sitting on the ground, basically exerting no real pressure. If, for instance, I was in the desert and it was 50 degrees ambient outside, and that would be a lot higher. If I was flying fast and doing aerobatic maneuvers and putting more pressure on the engine, again, it would be higher. But from memory, I think this level here is the 30 minute level. That's the 12 minute level. That's the two and a half minute level. And that's the maximum limit. And again, I should show that we can put that into single engine mode. Uh, so pip and pip. And thresholds have changed again. And we also get an extra uh, transient limit of six seconds there. Right, let's put that back. Uh, all right, next, taco. The rotational speed of engine one here, or should I say turbine one, P, power turbine. Power turbine engine two here. NR, rotor. Again, in percent rather than RPMs. Percent just makes everything easier to understand. Absolute figure shown here. The absolute figure of the turbines are actually shown down here and here for some reason. Limits here, here and here all work as before. So to actually speed the rotor up and the engines, I'd actually reduce the collective, therefore having less friction on the blades. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so I reduce the collective the blades spin more freely and the engines and everything spins faster temporarily and then the computer takes over and it resets it now if i do it the other way around suddenly put the pitch of the blades up and look it takes a while for it to catch up all the way down to 81 percent if i pause there uh, and as i was saying some in some parameters if it goes too low you get a warning as well is a low rotor warning bad absolutely if it gets too low they'll stall and you'll fall out of the sky. So it's all very, very dangerous stuff. All right, and I'm not a great helicopter pilot, as you all know, so you'll probably see a lot of yellows and reds when I'm flying. Let that stabilize. As I said, uh, turbine speeds here, NG, and that's the gas generator. Of each engine has a gas generator and we have a percentage speed here. What is a gas generator, viewers? I've actually forgotten and I couldn't find it explained in the manual. So if you know what the gas generator is on one of these aircraft, please let me know. These work the same as we've learned before. They can be green, they can be yellow, and they can be red. Uh, and that's as far as I can take the in-flight page for now. So why don't we shift it over to ground now. So pip, pip, pip. Don't move these too low because you'll stall the uh, generators. Uh, pip. Right, ground. Added uh, extra symbology here. Engine oil pressure. Engine 1, engine 2 in PSI, 79 and 81. Hydraulic pressure of three systems. Primary hydraulic pressure, 3,000 PSI. Utilities pressure and hydraulic accumulator pressure. All of these are modelled as well. They are an important thing to keep in aware of. They are colour-coded as we saw before. And in fact, I just had a cheeky idea, viewers. Uh, you know, I couldn't get the temperature of the engines up. Watch this. I'm, this may work, it may not. So just bear with me. In fact, we may have a nasty fire after this. What I'm going to do on one of my engines is remove the computer management of it. And I do that by pressing that button there, finger lift. I'm actually going to move my right engine here into lockout. It gives me full control of the engine. And there's a very good chance I'll break something here. So let's just see what happens. Right, now let's see if I can really rev this right engine up. Look at that. 30 minutes. We're into the 10 minutes. Can we get to the two minute? So yeah, we did. We got it to the two and a half minute line. Look at that, amazing. Wow, 180% torque. We have just smashed. There are bits of metal churning away and chirping away that have been smashed off various gears and stuff. That is a mechanic's worst nightmare. And these helicopters are so susceptible because the engine in this is directly linked to a drivetrain, which you don't really have in a jet. You just push a load of gas out the back. And this, you're physically working them against a bunch of spider gears and they will absolutely get trashed. Just as in a car, if you turn your turbo up too high in a car, you'll smash your gears. 
this is taking a bit of a weird turn. I'm aware of where viewers, but it's still kind of interesting, isn't it? Now, I wonder, can I fix the plane or have we permanently damaged it? Uh, let me have a think. So if I put that back now to fly, will it go back to normal or have I smashed the plane? So give it a few seconds and see if we can get back to normal. No, I've smashed it. What should be happening is the, the 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 engine should be regulating, but it's not. We're stuck. Oops. And you can see the rotor spin. I'm really spinning so fast the rotors now that they're going to whir off and fly off and hit someone at some point. So, yeah, I wouldn't be a very good heli helicopter pilot. And you can see we've got the color coding there. Anyway, viewers, uh, that actually takes us beautifully into our next mode, uh, emergency mode, which is that if you obviously do something silly like I've done, emergency mode will come up, which replaces the bottom sector here with this. You will be shown here warnings and cautions. I always get these mixed up, but uh, warning which you can see there, master warning pip, is in red. That's something that's happening that is going to lead to imminent death uh, of the pilot or worse. Uh, and you can see it's because I've got high rotor RPM, which will obviously result in my death if I carry on much longer. Also, you could have additional yellow cautions. Cautions are not as bad. Things like you're running out of fuel, but you're not going to die immediately. That would be cautions. And that's that, viewers. That's in flight. That's ground, and that's emergency. I'm going to probably just leave the plane as it is. Let's see if we can go into system when it's in, in emergency. Ping, we can. Engine main oil pressure, as we saw before, one and two. And that is very bad. 106 PSI of oil pressure is not a good thing. NGB, nose gearbox oil pressure, left and right. Nose gearbox oil temperature. That will mean something to someone. The hydraulic pressures, as we saw before. X mission, transmission oil. Each engine has a transmission, obviously, and you have engine one, engine two, oil pressure and oil temperature. ECS, environmental control system, like the aircon in your car, interestingly, is in Fahrenheit where everything else is in Celsius. Why is that, viewers? Why did the Americans do that? I just don't know. Cockpit, so the co pilot is, is luxurious 78 degrees Fahrenheit, while I'm freezing my bits off at 71 degrees here. EFAB, uh, that would be the avionics base, uh, left, right, forward and aft, and they're zero for some reason, I don't know if that's good or bad, or even if it's modelled, I don't know. Next is a weird one to have here, stabilator position, so if I go out here, that there is my stabilator, and it helps in terms of my elevation pitch. At the moment it's just telling me that it's that 19 degrees down, and for a nominal speed of 90 knots. Finally we have the generators, we have the... Uh, Ability to turn the generators off here, but not on. We have generator one, generator two. They're both on, as you can see here. They are what convert the mechanical energy of the engines into electricity to power all these systems. If they go off, the systems go off. I'll turn one off here. That's safe to do. Generator one. Pip is now off. Ah, generator one fails. A caution and not a warning. Now, if I wanted to turn them back on, I would go down here and reset the generator. Pip. And that should turn me back on. And generator one is back on. That, viewers, is the engine page in three formats and the systems page. And as the months go on, I'll slowly work my way through the others. I hope that was useful and bye-bye.